So DBS has been used for Tourette syndrome, depression, dysto uh, dystonia also, um, and OCD. You know, there's a continuum of these diseases, and that's evident if you look at Tourette. I think Tourette syndrome is kind of the key to sort of understanding that. Um, the reason that all these things work is that you have these parallel circuits in the brain. If you look at the anatomy of the basal ganglia, it is organized in these what we call segregated parallel circuits. Uh, and that is, you know, the motor circuit is kind of that diagram that you've learned with the, you know, motor cortex going to patamen, going to pallidum, going to uh, STN and then to thalamus. Uh, similarly, you have a preparative circuit that is prefrontal cortex caudate, a uh, different portion of the GPI, uh, and then also through the STN to thalamus, uh, you know, and a limbic circuit as well. Uh, all of these are parallel. And, and we have found that you can target, you know, just as we can target portions of the motor circuit to treat motor diseases, we are able to target and treat with DBS areas of the preparative circuit to treat OCD, areas of the limbic circuit to treat uh, depression. Um, the video that made this clear to me when I was trying to understand that, because when that was first suggested to me as a, I guess as a medical student or maybe as a young resident, I, you know, it didn't make any sense to me that um that these things were the same they don't they don't feel the same uh you know or, or look the same in, in a lot of ways uh but but Tourette syndrome is which of course we can't play shoot um Tourette syndrome is uh, is is i think a key to understanding this because Tourette syndrome looks very much like a movement disorder when you see patients with Tourette syndrome they look to some degree like that dystonic patient they have these you know, uncontrolled movements, it can be neck movements, arm movements, can be vocalizations, etc. Uh, but if you talk to them, what they describe is an urge to to have movement. They, 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 what, what, they, what they think about is, you know, they, they say, gee, I have this feeling that I have to tick, and, and when I tick, I actually feel relieved. That doesn't feel like the disease feels like the urge, not the actual movement. And so it, it has characteristics that are sort of like OCD. There is a compulsion to do this thing. And so in my mind, that's, that, that has helped me understand sort of how these things are related. And if you think about the frontal lobe as kind of, in, you know, moving, moving sort of from the central sulcus forward, what you have are increasingly complicated um, uh, determining, you know, determinants of movement and action, right? So if you look at motor cortex, it is, very simple, single muscle sorts of things. Premotor cortex tends to be coordinated movements, grasping, that sort of thing. If you get beyond that, you get into sort of motivational um, uh, diseases, sort of, you know, area 46 and, and uh, you know, areas that are more typically considered more cognitive, but are sort of the compulsion to move, compulsion to wash hands, wash hands that sort of thing. Those are implicated largely in, you know, CD. And then emotional states you, you can think of as sort of dispositions toward action or inaction. You know, you know we, we perceive them differently. We perceive them as melancholy and, and other things. But, but um, in, in many ways, I think uh, they are simply the, the more complicated integration of, of, of motor activity. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.